Earlier this year, I turned 29 and I decided that from the last year of my 20s, I'm going to do it completely sober. Now, for most people, this would probably be a nightmare, but being honest, although I don't have a problem with alcohol, for me, it's given me mixed results. So I thought having spent a whole decade consuming it fairly regularly, one year being sober wasn't too much to ask. For the last 10 months or 319 days, I have not touched a drop of alcohol. And these are the five things that I've learned in that time. Now let's just touch on motivation before we start, because as soon as someone says that they stop drinking alcohol, especially if they've had a previous time where they have drank alcohol, everyone just assumes that they have a problem or they're just a bit weird. I just want to highlight that alcohol is the only drug in society that commands this position. I would get fewer strange looks if I turned down a coffee or if I turned down a line compared to turning down a pint. When it comes to me, I have previously drank in excess and that was mostly in my first few years at university before my course got really serious and quite demanding. In that time, I got quite anxious and that was around my fourth year and I actually spent six months being sober then. That was more as a survival technique and just trying to get through my course rather than sort of some nice self-improvement experiment. After fourth year, I did go back to drinking, but I was much more modest in my drinking and I probably drank about twice a month. And that brings me on to now, which is what has changed. Anxiety. My anxiety levels around alcohol are much higher than I previously realized. And as a result, Having been sober for the last 10 months, I've had a huge reduction in my general anxiety levels. I would say that I'm more on the anxious end of the spectrum when it comes to my personality, and I do tend to worry a lot. I've also had previous issues with my mood and anxiety, as I've sort of alluded to earlier in the video. But in general, alcohol would essentially just supercharge my anxiety. And I was starting to realize that although I knew I'd have anxiety around a hangover, I was also having it sort of further on into the week, so maybe three or four days afterwards, I still feel generally anxious. But I didn't quite realize just how long that would go on and how much of my anxiety was related to alcohol before I stopped. There's also another aspect to my anxiety around alcohol, and that is actually before having a drink, I would get anxious. I would find that if I was having a night out on the Friday and I was going to have to drink, by the Wednesday I would start to feel quite anxious and already be worrying about what would happen on the Friday, how that would impact my Saturday and my Sunday, and I'd be anxious about the anxiety that I was going to experience as a result of the alcohol. This is actually a fairly well documented phenomenon in anxiety disorder, and it's called anticipatory anxiety, where someone starts to become anxious about the anxiety that they're anticipating. But I hadn't really appreciated that I have that around alcohol and the anxiety that comes with it. And that for me is a really quite insightful thing to find out. So not only was drinking making me anxious after I had a drink, but it was also making me anxious before I'd even had the night out or the drink. And that's quite a lot of the week then if you're drinking once every fortnight. I think as well as touching on anxiety, it's also important to touch on my mood. And I would say that my mood has been much more robust over these last 10 months. I would not say that it's been a complete perpetual state of euphoria or bliss. And actually I've had to deal with some quite uncomfortable things going on in my life. I lost my job earlier in the year and that was just after coming back from Glastonbury. But I remember at the time I was dealing with it quite well. I was quite calm. Although I was stressed, it wasn't out of proportion. And even in that moment, I had the clarity to recognize, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I haven't just been drinking for the last five days at Glastonbury and I'm not dealing with this with the hangover, with the anxiety, as well as losing my job. And I have found that over and over again during this time, I am much more robust, much more able to become sort of zoomed out and be a bit more critically thinking and clear in my thinking. And I do put that down to the lack of alcohol. So the second thing that has completely transformed in this last 10 months is my energy. I am gonna speculate that part of this is because I'm no longer working on A&E, doing night shifts and doing shift patterns. I'm much more nine to five these days. But I would also say that alcohol has probably impacted my sleep and my sleep is probably better and that has probably subsequently improved my energy. So maybe it's not that the lack of alcohol has led me to be more energized. It's more that the things that come with alcohol has meant that I've had better sleep and that has led me to being much more energetic and feeling better in myself. I didn't even drink that much so I would drink maybe once a fortnight and that would be maybe a, a big night out but I wouldn't you know drink all that much but that would impact my sleep. It would probably come with a myriad of bad decisions such as eating a kebab late at night, being dehydrated and I think those things do have an impact. Actually now I've got a regular sleeping schedule and a good routine around my sleep and my sleep is much better quality. I'm so much more sensitive to when I've had a bad night's sleep or I've stayed up late and I recognize that actually maybe part of the hangover is just fatigue. But I imagine all these behaviors around alcohol, not just the alcohol itself, were impacting my energy beforehand. To be honest, I haven't actually needed less sleep. I've needed eight or nine hours and I always need eight or nine hours. That has always been the case. It's not some like limitless pill now that I've stopped drinking alcohol. 
However, when I do get those hours, I feel so much better rested now that I'm not drinking. And in fact, as I mentioned, I, I think I'm more sensitive to the feeling of tiredness and exhaustion. And actually, I'm less tolerant of it now that I've had such a long period where I felt well rested. I don't want to feel exhausted anymore, which is gonna be fun when I end up having children. But I am not willing to feel like that day to day and if I can I will then have an early night the next night and try and correct that feeling. I think I've also had better concentration, focus and just been able to get more things done that I've wanted to get done. I think actually feeling tired means that you think more negatively and that means you have a more negative mindset and you're less likely to see the positives or the possibilities and more likely to see the reasons why you can't do something and I do think that plays into it as well. Socialising. So it's fair to say that socialising has changed and to be honest has taken some getting used to. I think the fact that I'm a doctor and I have to talk to patients about fairly uncomfortable things fairly regularly and you know these people are essentially strangers, I think that puts me a bit ahead of other people perhaps when it comes to this part and although I have that and have that experience and do that regularly, I still found this quite challenging at points and it has taken some getting used to. I recognise that some people may not find it that easy to talk to other people and I now recognise that alcohol has such an important role in lubricating that process. And even in other industries where they may be trying to drum up business and there may be quite a lot of face to face with new people and new clients, often alcohol is actually used as that lubricant to keep things going and to keep the conversation flowing. Actually, it is very good at that. And I would say that this has probably been the most challenging part of the whole 10 months that I've spent sober. I've definitely found the start of a party or the pre-drinks the hardest thing to navigate and this takes the most confidence and this is probably the most uncomfortable part. It's when people recognise that you're not drinking, they're probably more likely to see that you've got a zero on your beer and obviously everyone else is sober. So it does take a bit more confidence to start a conversation, introduce yourself and get that kind of ball rolling. However, I would say that actually just like everything, anything that's hard, you practice it and you get better at it. And I have definitely developed in this domain and actually I don't find it too difficult now. I'm actually going to put together a full guide of how to navigate this space, you know, socializing sober essentially. And so make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'm going to be working on that in the next few months. There are loads of benefits that come with socializing sober. And the first one is that I actually remember what people are telling me and what they say. And so I actually get to know the person. I feel like when I'm socializing and I'm having alcohol, Often I just don't really know what I've talked about during the night out or at the party and I don't really know the person. I just sort of have a vague feeling of warmth towards them or negativity towards them, but I don't really know why. And actually I can remember everything that people are saying, you know, at the pre-drinks, but also throughout the night. And I feel like I've had a deeper connection with people as a result. And people may forget that they've told me something, but I remember it. So I may bring up how is someone's sister or how is the new job. And actually that has brought me a lot of connection and that's been a huge benefit to socializing sober. The other thing that comes with that is that I can remember exactly what I've said. And the next morning, I don't have the anxiety on top of the alcohol anxiety, but the anxiety of what did I say to that person? Did I say it slightly wrong or, you know, especially when you're navigating fairly tricky conversation topics, which often comes up when you are socializing drunk, then I know that I can be confident that I said it in a way that is appropriate because I was sober. And actually the pre-drinks is the hardest part and it does get easier throughout the night. And that is the nice thing about it is that actually as the night goes on, as people become more drunk or have more drinks, they relax, they become a bit drunk. You can relax, you can be less careful with what you're saying. You can actually have a bit of fun with it. You can be more and more confident as the night goes on that people aren't gonna exactly remember what you said. And you can be a bit more risky and make a few jokes that everyone else is. So the fact that you're sober doesn't mean that you have to just be boring. And actually I found that quite fun um, in itself. And the other thing is that people find you really funny because you are not drinking. So your brain is going like this whilst everyone else is numbing and dumbing down their brain processes. So you're very quick. And I have found a lot of people have come up to me and said, God, I didn't remember you being so funny, especially like old mates. And it's just because I'm sober and it's like a cheat code. So that's quite nice, you know. Um, I quite like that myself. Yeah, it, there are loads of benefits to it. And I've actually had a load of fun. It's not that I'm you know, boring now that I don't drink, but you know, as people get more drunk, you can also come out of your shell a bit more and care a bit less about exactly what you're saying. The other thing that I've started doing is that if there is someone that is interesting or is in an interesting field or is you know an expert on something that I want to know about, at the start of the party or at the pre-drinks, I beeline and just go straight to them. And then I end up talking about what I want to talk about for the first awkward bit. Ask them a load of questions. 
they obviously tell me everything and they love it because I'm taking an interest in them. And then after a few drinks, once everyone has sort of loosened up, I can then do the sort of like hellos. And that's a bit less painful than if you have nothing in common with someone and you're both completely sober. And I would say that actually being sober gives you a bit more of a zoomed out bird's eye view of, of a party or a situation. And so you can navigate these things a bit more smartly. So there is definitely always a time to leave a party and being sober, you don't feel this weird drunk obligation to stay till the very end of the party. When everyone's drunk and you're no longer enjoying their company or they can no longer talk, you can get home before having to take someone else home. And you can see that situation for what it is, time. So the next thing to touch upon is time. And just before we do, if you're enjoying this content, could you take one second just to click the subscribe button down below. We're trying to get to 10K subscribers and you should follow along for more self-reflective videos like this about self-improvement, medicine, loads of other things. So the first thing when it comes to time is that I probably manage my social diary a bit more efficiently now that I'm sober. This is naturally because I want to spend time doing things that I enjoy and actually partying and going to the pub are both really quite long processes and aren't that enjoyable when you're sober. Nowadays, I would spend a long run catching up with my brothers or I may go play squash with my friends or I may have friends over for dinner. And those things are, I find, much shorter in length normally. And I also am much more efficient and get to know the person a lot more and catch up properly than going to a party. So with that, I have more time. There is also then the hangover thing. I don't have hangovers anymore. And I would hate to think how much time I have wasted over the years making myself feel awful. <laughs> and actually, now I have all that time back. And with this extra time, I've managed to do loads of things. And I really enjoy that. And I think I'm starting to recognize that, yes, I enjoy my friends. I enjoy socializing. But I also enjoy pushing myself and exploring new things myself. And this year, I've really enjoyed starting... Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and I've just run a marathon last week in Malaga. I've managed to pass paces which was a lot of time that I needed outside of my job to revise and these things you know they are harder to do whilst you're also drinking and it's not that you can't do them but for me I just I enjoy that aspect of my life a lot and I think the trade-off is better. And then the last thing I didn't really know how to name this one planning sort of self-reliance confidence and this, I think, is a much more insidious process, so bear with me, it may not be the most articulate explanation. Overall, it is a overwhelming feel of more self-confidence and belief in myself and lack of doubting myself. And I think this comes in two parts. I think the first aspect is planning and having more trust in myself and more trust in my future self, importantly. I think some of this comes with the fact that I'm no longer in A&E doing sort of night shifts and things. I'm much more nine to five, so I can plan my life a bit better. But I also am more trusting that when I have a Christmas party, say, coming up, I know that I'm not going to have that spill over into Saturday and Sunday with a hangover. And actually, I will go home at a sensible time and I'll feel fine the next day. And just having that confidence in my future self, I have found really helpful for my own self-confidence. It means that I doubt myself less. And actually, there's a bigger and bigger evidence portfolio of times that I have said something and done it. And there isn't sort of this risk of having a rogue night out in the middle of the week that's going to just destroy everything that I want to achieve that week and push everything else back and add a load of stress. And actually, that has been a really nice feeling to have about myself. I think I am self-doubting in my nature. And for anyone else that sort of has that kind of personality disposition, this can, I think, be a really useful tool in trying to develop that and you can then look at the evidence to say, no, I did all those things that I said I was going to do. Why would I doubt myself next week? Why would I get anxious about that? And I think the second part is also to do with self-confidence, but it's slightly different. And it's going to make me sound a bit robotic and paranoid, but do bear with me. These things are a bit stranger articulating them out loud than they are sort of in practice, I feel. I no longer have that two to 5% maybe of my week or year or month where I'm under the acute influence of alcohol or I'm also going through alcohol withdrawal. And I'm in that weird state where your mind isn't quite your own. Not that it's not your own, but you just don't feel quite yourself. You're either drunk or you're hanging. And I don't find that either of those are really how I feel in myself when I'm not. I've also found that actually without alcohol or being hungover, I'm putting my most sharp vigilance capable self out into the world every single day of every single week and that has sort of insidiously led me to be more self-confident in myself it's helped me be more trusting myself and as i've said it does sound quite anal or robotic when i'm saying it but actually 
it does lead to more self-confidence for me. I've talked about the fact that I struggle with imposter syndrome and I think the fact that I'm not drunk or hungover making bad decisions or making mistakes, frankly, or upsetting people when I don't need to, that has actually really helped with that. And although those things sort of do improve as you get older, I think, and you know, not everyone who's drunk makes bad decisions, at the same time, I do think that those things did weigh heavy on me and on my mind. And actually, I just prefer myself when I'm not drunk or not hungover. And that has led to this great sort of feeling of overall self-confidence that I haven't really experienced up until now. And obviously, having a drink, it is a laugh. And there are loads of times that I have loads of memories from big nights out. And I really, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that I don't enjoy that or don't recognize that that was fun at the time. And, you know, I do miss that. But there is also a part of me that loves self-development and self-improvement and trying to be the best version of myself. And those two things do come at a cost for one another. And, you know, maybe I will go back to drinking and I'll enjoy that aspect again. But for now, I'm really enjoying the fact that it allows me to put the best version of myself out there. It's also just made me feel better about myself for myself. And I'm enjoying that feeling. I think the last point is that actually every time I do say no to alcohol, I am going against the cultural or social norm that is to drink. And every time I do that, sometimes it's actually met with some quite sort of funny looks and I have to stay strong and say, no, I don't drink anymore. And that is a constant reminder that I am putting myself first. I'm no longer drinking because society expects me to or because my colleagues expect or want me to or because my friends are having a birthday and they think that that means that I love them more if I drink for them. I'm now doing what I want to do and putting myself first and making a decision for me every single time I say, no, I'm no longer drinking, that I am worthy of making decisions for me. And I think I also tend to need to remind myself of that and and I think this has been a really good way of sort of developing that aspect to myself and encouraging myself to do things for me although it kind of doesn't really look like a decision for me on the surface it sounds like I'm just torturing myself and you know denying myself the fun of alcohol and the taste of alcohol and all these things actually I'm gaining so much more Equally, these are just things that I've learned and I've experienced and I am absolutely not telling anyone to go and stop drinking or giving out any advice. This is just my personal experience. Uh, work, drinking works a lot better for a lot of people. Equally, I think we should recognise there's a portion of society where it clearly doesn't work and it gets to a point where actually it's no longer working and you can't stop. And that is a grim reality of alcohol. But yeah, this is just me and what I'm doing. However, if you are on the fence and you have thought, maybe I don't you know, need to drink or maybe I would like to try that, I'd really encourage it. And actually it's been a really positive experience for me. And if you wanna reach out and talk about it, then feel free to uh, drop a comment down below. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing a full guide to socializing sober because I think that's the big thing that people really are apprehensive about and struggling with. Um, so do stay tuned for that, subscribe to the channel. And if you're interested in continuing to watch self-reflective videos, here's another one about what happened when I lost my job just after Glastonbury and how I dealt with that. Thanks, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.